So how has the Corps of Engineers tried to address these and many other varied challenges? We're using research and development to help us in our current missions to position the Army and the nation for the future. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has a highly diverse research and development program consisting of about 2,500 employees at seven labs. The Engineer Research and Development Center is headquartered at Vicksburg, Mississippi, and four of the seven labs are located there. They are the Coastal and Hydraulics Lab, Geotechnical and Structures, Information Technology, and Environmental Laboratories. The Topographic Engineering Center is in Alexandria, Virginia, the Construction Engineer Research Lab in Champaign, Illinois, and the Cold Region Research and Engineering Lab is in Hanover, New Hampshire. Our efforts are also supported by the Institute for Water Resources in Alexandria, Virginia, and the Hydraulic Engineering Center in Davis, California, and many partnered labs uh, and, of course, with industry. We're very proud of the Engineer Research and Development Center, winner of the Army Lab of the Year for the past, uh, for the past three straight years. We're not just doing hard science, we're producing products for our warfighters. From explosive effects to nanotechnology, we transform pure and applied science to practical solutions for warfighters and the American public. And I'll uh, show you a few examples of those on the next slides. The bombing of the Marine barracks in Lebanon in 1984 was the genesis for the Army to establish one of the first research programs to study the effects of terrorist weapons on conventional buildings and structures, and to develop improved design and retrofit methods for these facilities. These retrofit technologies were a part of the renovation efforts for the Pentagon. On 9-11, when the plane impacted the Pentagon, the retrofitted section of the building suffered much less damage than the sections that had not yet undergone renovation, thus saving countless lives. This slide shows that an office only 50 feet north of the impact sustained a virtually no damage, while an unretrofitted office located 300 feet north of the impact was virtually destroyed. Research in this area has continued to make this technology easier to apply and use by deployed forces. Next slide. As I said, these efforts led to many uh, different techniques to include portable, lightweight force protection systems, uh, shown here on the left, and to a very effective anti-indirect fire roofing system, uh, both of these systems in use today in Iraq and Afghanistan. We've also developed tunnel detection capabilities, as you can see on the right-hand side of the slide, that have increased security and enhanced protection of facilities and personnel along the U.S. border, Gaza Strip, and at Iraq and Afghanistan detention facilities. Next slide. Through our geospatial engineering capabilities, we have developed several systems in direct support of our warfighters to improve their situational awareness and operational planning capabilities. One system is Buckeye, which provides overhead real-time imagery to a very high level of clarity, as you can see on the left side of this slide. This kind of capability supports a more expeditionary and adaptable force. Prior to 9-1-1, Core leadership developed capabilities to project core teams to disasters and contingencies. In order to maximize team effectiveness while minimizing our footprint, highly mobile and useful communication suites called teleengineering kits were developed. Even newer versions are in use today. It allows our teams and the commanders that they support to leverage the entire Corps of Engineers capability through reachback. The Engineer Research and Development's 
Reach Back Support Center processed over 4,000 requests for information alone in 2010. Next slide. Now, the Corps is not only involved in force protection, but force projection as well, given the importance of strategic and operational mobility. ERDIC developed an ability to assist force projection in rapidly downloading the joint high-speed vessel at sites without developed ports. We recently demonstrated this capability uh, with the lightweight and rapidly installed causeway system. This permits the joint high-speed vessel to use small austere ports throughout the world. ERDIC developed high-strength fabrics that are inflated by pumping in seawater to produce a causeway. The fabric causeways collapse to a size and weight that can easily be transported by the joint high-speed vessel. Yet the fabrics and the cover materials are so strong and durable that they can easily take the offloading of M1 main battle tanks. This Arctic development will add significantly to our future force projection capabilities and operations, especially in overcoming anti-access and denial operations. So as you can see, this system won the Logistics Technology Implementation of the Year Award in 2008. Next slide. At our installations or force projection platforms, we spun off previous work under the Fort Future program to develop regional planning tools that allows us to look at systems of installations like the Fort's Bragg, Jackson, Gordon, Benning, Carter, shown on the left-hand side of this slide, as well as to look at installation systems. This allows us to model and project land, water, and energy use so installation master planners can be more proactive and predictive reference future needs. We used other Fort Future capabilities to model and project endangered species locations and impacts on training land and training operations, like at Forts Benning and Hood, shown on the right side of this slide. These technologies also have a spillover effect on our ability to address the national level infrastructure and water resources uh, challenges I mentioned earlier in our civil works program. The synergy between all of our programs is made possible through the work of our engineer research and development center. Next slide. So in conclusion, the Corps views science and technology and its research and development efforts as strategic enablers to our warfighters, the American public, and our nation. Together with our many partners, uh, some of whom are here today, we will continue to look for better ways to enhance our national security, economy, and quality of life now and well into the future. I'm happy to take any questions that you may have at this time.